Well, good morning, my members church. Good morning. Good morning to those of you that might be watching online. This is the day that the Lord's made. His word says rejoice and be glad in it. Last week we started a new series called Worship Junkies, all right? And we talked about how each and every one of us are junkies in some way, right? We all kind of have that thing that we go to, right? When, I mean, each and every one of us, none of us are exempt from reaching those moments in life when we get overwhelmed, we get anxious, we get stressed, it just, the pressures of life just comes crashing down on us, and we all kind of have that go-to that we go to, right? Some people, right, they go to drugs and alcohol addiction. Uh, a lot of teenagers these days are dealing with, with cutting themselves, right? I mean, we're talking about some heavy, serious stuff here. A lot of people run to pornography, right? A lot of people uh, run to um, medications, prescription medications, right? This is deep. This is heavy stuff. Some people go to uh, cigarettes to relax themselves. That They go to all these different things. Maybe some, some of you might say, I just go for a walk. I go to the gym. I call my friend and I vent to my friend. I go for a drive. You do this, you do that. Whatever the case is, we all have our go-to, right, when life gets just a little stressful, right? Amen? The fact is, is that, you know, even though we all have our go-tos, God wants to be our go-to, right? You tell me your go-to and I will tell you your God. That's deep. That's good stuff, but it's so very, very true. Last week we talked about how God wants to be your go-to. He wants you to run to Him in those instances where you just feel like, man, I just don't know if I can do this. Right. If you have your word this morning, we're going to turn to Psalms. Psalms is known as the book of worship. We're going to go to Psalms chapter 96, verses 5 through 6 this morning to start us off. And it says this, For all the gods of the nation are idols. Notice the word God does not have a capital. Alright? Anytime you're in the word of God, this is just a little education moment, and you see God that's not capital, we're not talking about the one true God. We're talking about an imposter. Alright? So it says, For all the gods or the imposters or your go-to of the nation are idols. This morning, what we want you to understand is whatever you're going to, that becomes an idol or a god in your life. Not the one true god, but a god, an imposter, a replacement. And guess what? The Bible says that there's an enemy. John Tennyson says there's an enemy who is out to kill, to steal, and to destroy your life. But Jesus came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So there's an imposter. The enemy is out there and he's trying to get you to go to anything else. Some people, it's even food. And you run to food. You start feeling a little stressed out. And you run to food. Or you run to all these things that Brad just talked about. These become idols in our life. It goes on to say this. But the Lord, capital, that is the Lord Yahweh, the one true God, made the heavens. There we go. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Everybody say sanctuary. Sanctuary. Do you know where you are today? Sanctuary. You are in his sanctuary. So what's in his sanctuary? Strength and glory. The enemy wants you to go to the imposter. He's always out to trick you. He is known as one who is constantly looking to make you go to the imposter when God knows that the only thing that's going to ever really make you fulfilled in your life is His presence. Make Him your go-to. This morning we're going to open in prayer as we get into His Word. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. God, thank you for the Word of God that you have given to us. God, that instructs us. That encourages us, that enlightens us, God, that changes our life forever. God, this morning we pray as we open your word, God, that you would open our ears, open our heart, God, that we could receive everything you have for us today. God, may the words that we speak be directly from your mouth today to the heart of your people. God, challenge us to be different. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about the process of addiction, the process of addiction. So last week, I think we made it pretty clear, you know, we, we start off with, on kind of a heavy note 
uh, with a video talking about addictions, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, and all these things. And Misty and I made it really clear last week that we've never dealt with drug addiction or alcohol, but from what we do know, it always really begins in that moment when a friend or the dealer himself offers this first try sample, right? Offer that first hit, whatever that thing is, and then you just, maybe it's instantaneous, maybe it's two or three samples, but you get into it, and before you know it, really quick, you're addicted, you're hooked, right? And so I, you know, I like to, um, I like to kind of relay this to something that we all know very, very well. And those are the sample ladies at the grocery store. <laughs> because, you know, you go to the store and they are on every aisle, right? And, and you are inundated with all of these free samples. And honestly, if you go hungry, and I'm just going to tell you right now, if you go to the grocery store hungry, you are stupid. <laughs> you have no chance at all making it through that store. And they're just really trying to entice your children yeah. so that you will buy the product. Exactly. So, you know, you make your way down these aisles and on about every end cap, there she is. The sample lady, right? And she's got her little booth set up and she, you know, you know, there's all sorts of different samples, but the ones that really get you are the ones like when they have the electric skillet and they're like frying something and like the aroma, just the smell is just hitting you in the mouth and you're starving because you're stupid. And you're at the store and it's like, what on earth? Okay, so they give you these samples and, and how many of you guys know that they only give you one sample, right? It's kind of brave. They only give you one sample and then they like have to cut you off. They cut off your supply, right? They give you your first hit. You're addicted. You gotta have this. And now they're saying, no more, sorry. You're gonna have to buy it. But it's conveniently located behind me in the freezer and today it's $2 off. Who well, how can I resist? It smells good, it tastes good. I'm still enjoying the savory flavors trickling down my throat. I haven't even digested it yet. And you're sharing the discount with me. I have to buy this. I have to put this in my cart. This is going home with me, right? It's crazy. And kids. Oh, take your kids. Leave them at home or in the car in the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> but kids, I mean, they, you know, as long as as long as the child is, is is assisted by a parent, those kids can make their way. In fact, yesterday we were at the store yesterday, and and I caught on on our handy dandy spy cam. We caught we caught this kid that had just turned fourteen, and so you guys know there's an age. Stipulation. If you're 14 now, you can get the free samples on your own without parental permission. So we caught one yesterday uh, at the store. Check this out. We caught him on the spy camera. <laughs> uh, what would you like? Raspberries? Raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries. having fun though. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm 14, I haven't taken a lunch. I'm out of here. Oh, okay. Oh.
<laughs> yeah, that kid, I don't know who he belongs to, but he, that kid made it to probably like seven different sample stations and got him some samples, and, and the kid almost walked out full of all sorts of different samples, right? But I mean, so like, you know, how many of you guys do that? You hit just about every single, come on, be honest. How many of you guys hit just, it's like it's free, I'm gonna take advantage of it, right? So, you know, that, that's, that's, it's crazy. You can make your way for all these sample stations, but the fact is, all they're really doing is, these guys are just glorified drug dealers. They're just, I, I'm sorry, but I'm just being honest with you, because they're, they're peddling, and it's a, it's a scheme, it's a strategy to try to get you to a conversion to buy their product. It's, it's rigged. It's completely rigged, and I personally feel that it's wrong, and we need to put a stop to uh, grocery store sales. <laughs> worship experience, you are getting a sample, you're getting a taste, you're getting a hit of God's presence. It's only a sample. It's not actually enough to satisfy you. It's just a sample. The Bible says in Psalms 34 and 8, it says this, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in Him. Every week we offer samples right here at Turkey Ford Nowhere. We offer samples to people every week of what we know is really, really good. You see, those sample people, although they may just be paid, most of the time they really believe in what they are peddling, if you will. They're like, it's so good. And yesterday, for real, those people were on something. Because there were so many of them on every corner that I was avoiding them because I just want to get my groceries and get out. I had, I had kids at home, but we are there and on every single the corner, they are there. The secret is to not there. make eye contact. Exactly. <laughs> you right. like, I went way just... around to avoid them, but man, they were loud and they were like super in to what they were distributing. Well, I want you to know that every week when we come in here, it's an opportunity for us to help somebody else to experience or taste how amazing our God is. How many of you guys have ever gone to a gym before? Now, not like a gym to play basketball, like a gym to work out, like you lift weights. A few. A few of you should try it. It's awesome. But here's how you do it. Yes, it was. But it was, it was something. I 
It was a stepper. <laughs>
there, you live there. That's what God does with the praises of his people. So when you come in and you say, well, I really want the praises. Well, then you're just simply getting a sample off of somebody else who knows how to touch heaven. That's good. That is what you're doing. That's you're good. coming in and you're like, I feel something I haven't felt before. It's not because you know how to tap in yet. It's because you've come into the house of God and there's other people who know how to touch God's throne. You see, the Bible says that after Jesus gave his life, that he made it possible for each of us to come boldly to the throne of grace. Each of us can go straight to the throne of grace. That's where God himself resides. And when we come in for worship, that's what we do. Then you have an opportunity to give. Yeah, to give. Why? Because our money is connected directly to our heart. I mean, if your pocketbook could have a string, it would go from here to here. And God says, I want to know where your heart is. I want to know where your heart is. I don't need your money. I need your heart. It's all about a heart of worship. Then, the word of God is open. Man, this, you should lick every page. You should eat it up. This is what will change your life. It's what changed my life. Every week, we open it. But can I tell you all we're doing is giving you a sample? Holy cow, we can't give you everything in here. Look how many pages that is. We come in and we give you a little verse from here, and a little verse from over here, and a little verse from over here, and we're enticing you to go home and get into it yourself. We're just giving you a sample. And then we end with an altar call, and we give you an opportunity to apply what you've just heard. We give you an opportunity to respond and have that time in prayer. Colossians 3 and 16, Paul laid out what the church should do when you come together. And it says this. Let me read it from here so it says the same. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through the psalms, the hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing to God with gratitude in your heart. When we come together, Paul laid out what the church should do, and that is we should teach God's word. We should sing God's praises, and we should encourage and build up one another. You see, we don't just come to church just to give our praises to God, and just to learn from His word. We also come for one another. You see, we all do life every single day. And life has a way of really kind of hammering you sometimes. Life has a way of making you struggle and making you frustrated in all the emotions that come with life. When you come into the house of God, it is an opportunity for somebody else to encourage you. It is an opportunity for someone else to say, hey, I've been where you've been and lift you up. You see, today a lot of people say, I don't need to go to church. I mean, I, I, know, I know God. I know lots of people. That doesn't mean I have a relationship with them. Coming to church is like going to the gym. It inspires you to want to do more. It encourages you to want to go deeper. It motivates you. We encourage one another. The Bible says in Hebrews 10.25, Do not let us neglect meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially as you see the day of His returning drawing near. When we come to church, we're giving you a sample. But let me tell you, you will never be satisfied with a sample. A sample is only to entice you, but there's more that you can experience. So when you're at the store and you do cave, and you buy that full bladder out of the freezer, right? And you throw it in your cart. You know, the best part was not experiencing that sample. The best part is when you go home and you cook it up and you enjoy it. You eat the whole thing. That's really taking full advantage, right, of that offer. And like Misty was saying, this is an opportunity for us to come together, to encourage one another, to lift each other up, to get into God's Word, to experience His presence. But it's just a glimpse of God's glory. And really, here's what God wants. He wants you to get the whole platter and take it home and enjoy it for yourself. Because I'm telling you, Worship is way more than just what you experience maybe in 45 minutes here in his house. It's necessary. It's vital. You need it. I need it. We all need it. It's, it's highly important. And, and you know, we, we say to people all the time, 
Uh, people who say, I don't have to go to church to be saved. We say, yeah, but people who are saved, they love going to church. Because they see the value of being in God's house, in God's presence, with God's people. And they see the value, those who are, you know, chair, what we call chair three people here at Mount Rivers Church. You've got chair one, which are those people who are completely unchurched. You've got chair two, which is that person that's a brand new believer. They're just a baby in Christ. They don't know much of anything. But then you've got the chair three guys. And they're like, no, I wouldn't miss an opportunity to be in God's house because I know that I, I, I've got to be in God's presence with God's people and I know that God has given me gifts and talents and abilities that I can use for His kingdom to make God's kingdom bigger and better. That's what chair three people say to themselves. And so that's really, I mean, we're nothing but, but, but simple ladies. This and I. That's right. We're sample ladies. And, and we are trying to get you hooked. We are trying to get you addicted in this worship experience and getting a taste of God's Word. We're trying to get you your first hit. Seriously. We want you to be addicted overnight. Just immediately, we want you to become a worship junkie and we want you to become a junkie fast. We want you to say, man, pastors, I, this just isn't, this, this isn't cutting it. This, just going to church on Sunday morning and just going to life group, you know, just hanging out with these people, that's, it's all great. I love it. I'm growing in my faith. But it's not enough. I've got to have more. There's got to be something more that I can experience. I've got to be able to go deeper. I've got to have something more than what I'm getting just a few hours out of every week. Let me, let me take a, a bunny trail for just a second. You know, when we think about our kids. And parents, it is so easy to slip into this mentality in the church. We think to ourselves, if I just go to church and take my kids and check them in and throw them in kids' church, and I keep them in kids' church all the way up until the teens and then keep them in the youth group, then when they graduate from high school, can somebody say next level? Yeah. Right? When they graduate from high school, they're going to be good. No. That's the furthest thing from the truth. It's the furthest thing from the truth. The fact is, you ready for the facts? It's going to just like knock you out of your seat. You ready? Statistics say that 87 to 90 percent, this is according to Dawson McAllister, he took this survey years ago, but it's still, still the same today. 87 to 90 percent of kids that grew up in church 87 to 90 percent when they reach about sophomore age in college are leaving the faith. 87 to 90 percent. Almost 9 out of 10 kids that grew up going to kids church, they were in the youth group. You say to yourself, how on? That doesn't make any sense at all. That, those, those statistics are staggering. Why on earth would so many kids be leaving the faith? Here's why. Because going to church a few hours out of the week is just a sample. The fact is, if you want your kids to grow in their faith, if you want to grow in your faith, you've got to be a worship junkie. Right. You've got to move past the free samples because samples don't satisfy. Right? I mean, how stupid would it be to go to the grocery store during your lunch break and walk around and get, you would not be satisfied. Eventually, you're going to have to just get the whole meal and go home and eat it, right? Yes, right? Same way in your faith. You can't throw your kids in kids' church and you yourself can't sit in here on Sunday morning or even be in a life group and expect that you are going to be a spiritual rock star. Right. What's going to have to happen is you're going to have to take it home. You're going to have to get in God's Word. You're going to have to learn to kick on some worship music and just dig into God's presence. You're going to have to learn to access the throne room of God on your own. Listen to me as your pastor. Your life will never be the same again. I'm telling you. You can go to church your whole life, right? And you can stay just chair two. You can stay just a baby believer. You can just stay on that milk. Right? How many of you guys would love to still be on the bottle? What's your favorite kind of formula? Tell me. <laughs> What's your favorite formula? Because if you're just going to go to church on Sunday morning and just go on Wednesday night and never go any deeper, 
when he has so much more for you, you're not going to go any deeper, then you might as well just consider yourself to be that baby in the high chair, sucking on a bottle, enjoying that formula of faith, right? You're going to make heaven. It's okay. Relax. You're going to make it. You're going to make it to heaven. You're going to make it. Yes, buy your riches. You're going to make it. But who are you taking with you? What kind of contribution have you made to the kingdom? What kind of difference have you made in people's lives? God has something greater. And really it all spawns from being a worship junkie. We're taking it home and getting into His presence. I love Joshua, one of my favorite characters of the Bible. I have many, but he is one of them for sure. Because Joshua was a worship junkie. He was addicted to God's presence. See, Moses met with God face to face. He had a really great gig with God. He was meeting him face to face on a regular basis. And Joshua was like, I want something. I want to, I want to experience what it is that you're experiencing. And Moses was looking for someone that he could kind of pass the baton to and say, hey, I need somebody. My, my time is almost up here. I need to pass it along and give it to somebody else. And one day when Moses was over there hanging out and, and, and they were in the tabernacle in the tent, you know, God's presence was so thick and everybody was leaving. Everybody was going back to their tents. And Moses walks away and guess who's still in the tent worshiping God? Joshua. Joshua's still there. Inside, it says in Exodus 33 and verse 11, Inside the tent of meeting, the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. How awesome is that? Afterward, Moses would return to the camp, but the young man who assisted him, Joshua, son of Nun, would remain behind in the tent of meeting. Why? He was a worship junkie. He couldn't get enough of God's presence. He couldn't get enough of hanging out with God. Because I'm telling you, seriously guys, when you get your first hit, and when you get addicted, you cannot get enough. Right? Check out this chick on the front row, Brandy. She's so amazing. Like she came to us wounded and broken and beat up. She thought she was saved, but then she had a come to Jesus moment and realized that she wasn't saved. Right? And she became addicted to God's word. And now, anytime that day, you can find her in the bathroom on her face with the word of God. Because this girl is a prayer warrior. She is addicted to God's word. And God has completely remodeled her life to the point to where you cannot even recognize her anymore. Because she is a worship junkie. She's a worship junkie. You want to see your life never to be the same again. You've got to do the same thing. You've got to dig in. Psalms 22 and verse 3 says, You are holy, O oh, that it ha oh, you that inhabit the praises of Israel. Check out Hebrews 4 and verse 12. It says, For the word of God is alive and it's powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. God's word is pretty cool. You get into it, and you start to have this supernatural experience. You're healing your flesh, you're on this earth, but oh my word, you have this like out of this world experience when you communicate with the creator of the universe. And it's amazing. I'm telling you, if you've not experienced what I'm talking about, it is amazing when you just filter your life Set aside time to get along with God and just move into His presence. There is nothing like it. Jesus Himself, Luke chapter 5 and verse 16, it says, Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for a time of prayer. Constantly. Now you say, He was God. Yeah, but He understood as, as the God-man, as the Son of God while He was here on earth, that the only way for Him to have power was to get in God's presence. Do you have a cell phone? How many of you guys plug this thing in at night? Or your iPad or whatever it is you use, whatever device, you plug it in, right? Why do you plug it in? To get it recharged so you can have power for the next day. If you want to have power in your life, you've got to plug in to God's presence. You have to. Sunday morning and Wednesday night is not enough. I'll never forget. I'll never forget when I got that. I'm telling you guys. When I figured that out, right? I went to church off and on 
my whole childhood through my teen years. And then when I was 19 years old, I got serious about God because I got a glimpse of His glory. I figured it out. I figured out that there was something more than just the Sunday experience and the Wednesday night experience. Those all were great, great pillar points of my life. Those were wonderful. But I began to understand that I could get alone with God. I could shut everything out. I could get on my face. I could get in His Word. And the more I began to read His Word and just shut up and slow down and listen, He would begin to speak to me through the pages of His written Word. Supernaturally, God, the Creator of all the universe, would begin to speak to me. And He would show me things. I'm like, you talking to me? Seriously. God would show, and then I began to have dreams. And He would show me things about myself, or about other people, or about ways that He wanted to use me. This isn't because He called me to be a pastor. This is because he, He's called me to be His, his child. And he wants this for you, and he wants this for me. There's, there's a deeper place for worship junkies when you dig into God's presence. And I'll never forget, I was at, I was at kids' camp at Riverpoint. And it was a night service. And, um, man, I'm telling you, I was just learning in my walk. I was really learning how to dig into God's presence and the corporate worship experience. And here I am at this kids' camp. And there's all these seven to nine-year-olds, just a sea of them. And I'm down here in the middle of them, like Goliath, and I'm bawling my eyes out in God's presence. And God's Spirit just, just overwhelmed me. Like, I just couldn't handle, I couldn't handle it. It was just so thick. God's presence was so thick. I went back to the dorm that night, and I kept praying. And I was like, I don't, whatever this is, I don't want it to ever stop, because I feel amazing. Like, I feel so at peace. I feel like nothing, like no matter what could go wrong in my life right now, it wouldn't matter because this is like what I'm wired for. I want to never ever leave this moment because I'm like hanging out in the throne room of God. I don't want it to ever stop. Next, the, the next day, uh, camp was over. I went home. And what did I do? I made an altar out of my couch and I buried my face in that couch and I prayed for the first time, I prayed for like an hour. I didn't know how to pray like that. But I didn't want to stop. I read His Word, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I read His Word, and, and then I peeled my face out of the crease of the cushions. And I was like, this is the best thing I've ever experienced, ever. And I learned from that moment, when I became a worship junkie, I learned that every single morning I wanted to experience that. I wanted to seek the face of God before I ever would see the face of man. Each and every day of my life. And I learned that if I really wanted my life to have purpose and momentum, I really needed to make that the very, very core and the very center of my life. How about you? When, when did you really begin to realize that it was, it was more than just that church experience and the worship services, but God wanted to speak to you as a worship junkie? You know, I was one of the kids that Brad was talking about, the 87 to 90 percent. I never walked away from my faith. I grew up falling asleep under a pew. I grew up in Sunday school classes. I grew up at every church event, mowing the lawn, cleaning the bathroom, picking up after other people. I lived at the church with my family. But it wasn't, that wasn't enough. Every summer, I would go to camp. And I love camp. And as a kid, I could not have told you why I really loved it. But as an adult, I can tell you why I really loved it. The presence of God was so thick at summer camps. I would go to camp and I would live in those altars. I mean, when worship began, I would go to the altar. Because that is like where it was the thickest. And I would live there. And as an adult, we are so into camps because every camp I went to, it kept me wanting more of God. It inspired me. And I would come home to my home church and I would get in my word. And, and you know, it, it's hard as a kid, as a teenager, but every year I'd go back to camp and I would get inspired again and I would get motivated. Finally, at the age of 16, I was like, God, 
I know that you are real. I can never deny it. But I am sick and tired of playing games with you. I don't want to just go to church and then go home and live however I want to live. I want to be sold out, complete and total. I want to live in your presence. And God told me, and some of you guys have heard me say this, but God told me to turn off every other music other than Christian music because that was filling my life and my mind. And so for the next year, all I listened to was Christian music. God told me to set my alarm for 5 o'clock in the morning. 5 a.m. I was a sophomore in high school. He set my clock for 5 o'clock in the morning and I would get up and I would take my word and I would sit in my floor and I would read my Bible. And then I'd begin to pray and I'd read my Bible some more. And as I read my word, God would begin to convict me. And that was the Holy Spirit making me more like Jesus. He would say, this right here, this area of your life, it doesn't line up with the Word of God. You need to change it. Your attitude, the way you're treating your parents. Listen to me, parents. My mom and dad had a problem with me being disrespectful. It wasn't anything they did. It was God's Word that changed me. Now, they prayed for me, and that... I know that helped. But when I got into the Word of God, I began to read that I was to honor my mom and my dad. And I began to read that I wasn't to grumble and complain. And that my attitude and my actions were to emulate that of Jesus Christ himself. And every day, I would get a little closer and a little closer. And I would spend one hour of power every morning all through high school. Then I went to college. And listen, I knew where God wanted me to go because I had learned how to hear from God. As pastors, we have so many people tell us, I just want to know God's will. I just want to know what God wants me to do. I can't hear from God. I don't understand. When you say God talks to you, I do not understand what you're talking about. Let me tell you why. you got to get in there. And you got to spend time on your face. Listen, it's so easy to get on Facebook and Instagram it is so easy to let 30 minutes, 45 minutes, go by while you scroll through other people's lives, their comments, and their drama. I love social media. Nothing wrong with it. But if you get sucked into it, it's not going to change your life. If you get sucked into this, you will never, ever be the same. You see, what we do here at church is we set the example. At home, you should do the same thing. And we, we tell you to do it like this. If you've never done this, I challenge you to the 15-minute challenge. And it's this. Five minutes of worship. Choose a worship song that you love. Find it on your phone and turn it on. Close your eyes and shut everything else out. Listen to me. If you have to find a closet, like a war room, or you have to go to the bathroom, because that's the only quiet place in your house and you can lock the door. I'm telling you, you find a quiet place and you turn that worship on and you close your eyes and you begin to tell God how much He is worth. Begin to thank God for everything He's done and you'll say, I don't know what to say. Listen to me. Let it come from your heart. It won't be that hard. Then you take your word and for five minutes you begin to read your Bible. And as you do, begin to say, God, open my heart and open my mind, just like I say every Sunday, to receive what you have for me today. Because God wants to feed you guys. God wants you to hear from Him. And then you close your word, and you get on your face, and you close your eyes, and you begin to pray. And you begin to speak directly to God Almighty, the creator of the universe. In the beginning, maybe you don't know what to say. But I'm telling you, the more you read God's Word, the more you'll learn how to pray. Because you begin to pray the Word of God. It becomes half of what you say is right here. You begin to declare the promises. You begin to pray for people you know. You begin to understand what God has for you. And then you stop. And you stop talking. And you listen. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. The reason so many people cannot hear from God is they never stop talking. You want to hear from God. When you get done with those three things, you just stop. And you just close your eyes and you just listen. Maybe He won't talk to you the first time. Maybe not the second. You keep doing it. And I'm telling you, God's beginning to begin to speak to your heart. Maybe not in an audible voice. Maybe in a dream. Maybe just in your mind. And he's beginning to deal with you about things. And then
and then you begin to apply it to your life, and I'm telling you, you're going to take on a new form. You're going to take on a new look. You're never going to be the same again. You know, so often when we come to God, we think, I have to give up. I mean, if, I, if I become a Christian, i got to give up a bunch of junk. i, I got to give up the things I'm addicted to. And man, I really like this. Or I really like that. You don't have to give it up. Let me tell you, you're not giving up anything. You're replacing those things in your life with something so much better. Something you can't even fathom. But I challenge you to try it. You'll stand up with us this morning. Nothing greater than becoming a worship gentleman. You'll bow your head and close your eyes this morning. I just want to ask you as we're wrapping this up, if that's you, and you want to hear from God, you want more than just a sample, you really want to experience what we're talking about, I am telling you it's available. And as your pastors, we want to pray for you. If that's you, with your heads bowed, your eyes closed, we just want you to lift your hand this morning and just tell us who you are. I want to be a worship junkie. I want to go deeper in the things of God. Just raise your hand this morning. We're going to pray over you. We're not going to call you out. We're just going to pray over you. Father God, I thank you. You see the hands, God, and you see the hearts of your people. God, I pray, Father God, I know that my life changed forever when I finally began how to tap into the presence of Almighty God. And I pray, God, today that you would begin to draw your people. God, don't let them be satisfied on the samples any longer, but God, we pray that they would want the whole enchilada. God, that they would want everything you have to offer and more. God, that they would become so addicted to your presence, God. Lord, let their lives forever be changed. God, may we have and motivate the world around us to want what we have as a worship temple. With heads bowed and eyes closed today, some of you would be saying this morning, you'd say, Pastors Brad and Miss Di, I'm really just kind of that chair one person that you were talking about. I love the idea of being a worship junkie. I, I, I realize that these samples that I'm experiencing this morning are, are just samples and they don't satisfy long term. I want to go deeper in my relationship with you. I, I want to have that relationship that secures my salvation in heaven so that I can experience that deeper dimension of, of what it really means to be a worship junkie. And so this morning we would say to you that this is your moment. This is your time to receive Christ as your personal Savior. He loves you and He's drawing you right now by the power of His Spirit by the power of His love that He displayed for you on the cross, He is calling you into a real and life-changing relationship right now. What I'd like to do is I'd like to pray with you that you would just admit, just like I did, that you have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. That you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is, is the only way to make it to heaven and you confess Him as Lord of your life. You invite Him into your heart and dedicate from this moment forward that you're going to live for Him. If you want to do that today, we're not going to call you up here. We just want to see your hand. And we as a church want to pray with you. This is that part that we were talking about where we are here to uplift and encourage to build one another up in these corporate worship experiences. We want to pray with you for you and with you as you receive Christ this morning. So I'm going to count to three. And on the count of three, if that's you, I want you to raise your hand so we can see who you are to receive Christ. Ready? One, this is your moment. Two, three. Who are you? Amen. 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 Anybody else today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. See your hand. Thank you. And that goes for those of you watching online. Pray this prayer with us as we pray with you this day to receive Christ as Savior and King of our lives. Lord, I love you. I thank you for Jesus. I know that I've fallen short in sin. Forgive me, God. Cleanse my heart. Make me clean. I believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jesus saves. 
He is the only one that can rescue me. I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. I dedicate from this moment forward that I will live for you, God, according to your word. Surround me with godly people. Make your house my home. Make me a worship junkie. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. 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 Give a hand to those who received Christ today. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.